Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
epistle lesson today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hopes on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Our psalm today is Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord.
Truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Verily, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not part of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As most of you know, my husband Dave and I have a small farm with an array of animals. Having grown up in the city, this had always been a dream of mine. We moved from Dearborn to Willis in October of 1994 and were greeted by our first rescue animal, a goat named Lily. That was the beginning of Coda's Haven Animal Sanctuary that over the past 26 years has become home to many animals large and small, that were in need of rescue. Prior to moving from the city, I had trained and competed with my border collies in obedi obedience and fly ball for several years. When I had the opportunity to take one of my young dogs to a sheep herding clinic in May of 1996, I must admit I was immediately bitten by the sheep herding bug. Seeing these border collies work at what they were bred to do is truly an awesome sight. Well, of course, I needed sheep in order to train myself and my dogs. 
Over the next several years, we went from having just a handful of sheep to a flock of over 100. Each spring, you could usually find Dave during a Sunday fellowship hour sharing the weekly lamb count and other animal antics of our farm. While owning this many animals can be fun and rewarding, it also comes with its share of frustrations. I can't imagine doing any of this sheep management without the help of a dog. As a shepherd, the Border Collie is my most valuable tool. So what does that have to do with today's scripture? One day after a particularly grueling day of worming sheep, yes, we always seem to pick the hottest day in the summer to do this, and in the process I had been stepped on several times, knocked down once, and of course had landed in a pile of you-know-what. When I came back to the house, I was grumbling. These stupid sheep, can't they just be a little cooperative? Don't they understand that this is good for them and we're actually trying to do something that will help them? Why do they seem to fight us every way? As I was recovering from Sheep Wrestling 101, a verse from Psalm 100 came into my head. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Well, I certainly wasn't like the sheep I had just worked with that day, or was I? I got to thinking maybe this deserved a little bit more of my attention. There are many references to a shepherd and a sheep in both the Old and New Testaments. To be honest with you, I have to admit I'd never given it much thought before I had sheep of my own. Growing up as a child, references of sheep in the Bible conjured up images of cute, docile creatures staying out of trouble by sunning themselves on a hillside and lazily grazing and drinking. I don't remember ever thinking about possible predators lurking in the shadows, so how hard could it be to shepherd these creatures? After having worked with sheep, I'd like to suggest to you that the analogy might have a stronger meaning and is not quite as idyllic as I had grown up to believe. I'd like to spend a few minutes highlighting some of my favorite scriptures that use the sheep-shepherd analogy. I've already mentioned Psalm 100, the very familiar Psalm of Thanksgiving. It states in verse three that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 23 tells us about the Lord depicted as a shepherd taking care of his flocks by providing food, water, comfort, and protection. Many people have the impression that sheep are dumb. While they may not be as clever as some animals, we usually don't give them enough credit. Sheep do have a free will of their own. Come to think of it, so do we. And that's what usually gets them and us into trouble. In today's scripture passage, Jesus tells us that he calls his sheep by name, and they follow him. I can't say the same for my sheep. If I went to the gate of my pasture right now and called out to my sheep, it's more likely that nothing would happen. A few of them might lift their heads, turn my way to check out what the noise is all about. Bubba, one of our bottle lambs from several years ago, might slowly start meandering my way. It is possible that the flock would come running if they saw I had a couple buckets full of grain to feed them. Other than that, they would probably be content grazing on their own. How often has God called to us and been ignored? If we've answered the call to enter through the gate and join his flock, do we still listen or do we do so only when it's convenient for us or when we have a specific need. In Luke 15, verses 3 through 7, Jesus tells the parable of the lost sheep. The scripture reads, Wouldn't any man among you who owned a hundred sheep and lost one of them leave the ninety-nine to themselves in the open and go after one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will lift it onto his shoulders with great joy and as soon as he gets home, he will call his friends and neighbors together. Rejoice with me, he will say, 
for I have found that sheep of mine which was lost. I tell you the same is in heaven. There is more joy over one sinner whose heart is changed than over 99 righteous people who have no need for repentance. Now, I can't actually say that we've ever lost a sheep on our 20-acre farm, but we've had similar experiences that have illustrated this point to me. Probably the most memorable experience have happened during lambing season. One year, we had finished lambing. I looked out the kitchen window early on a Saturday morning and saw four hawks circling above our pasture. Not a good sign. As I ran out to the pasture, I could see a small lamb lying all alone, no mother in sight. The lamb was very weak and couldn't stand up. The inside of her mouth was cold, also not a good sign. Quick action was needed. I scooped her up and hurried her into the house. Out came the heating pad. Lamb milk replacer was quickly mixed and heated. The lamb was too weak to nurse, requiring me to pass a tube directly into her stomach to deliver nutrients directly. Within an hour of her tube feeding and time on the heating pad, her body temperature was back to normal. An hour later, she was on her feet. Did we celebrate? You bet we did. Did we call friends and family to share our success? Absolutely. During the time I worked on the lamb, it was as if she were the only sheep we had on the whole farm. Success stories like that make the work worth it. There is so much in the Bible, Old and New Testaments, that refer to sheep and shepherds. For example, as I mentioned, how would we have made it through life without the 23rd Psalm? The life of David would have lost much of its glow had it not been for the fact that he was a shepherd lad when Samuel discovered David to be God's choice to become the greatest king Israel ever had. As a matter of fact, a real shepherd in those days was born to be a shepherd. He was sent out with the flock as soon as he was old enough to go. He grew into the calling of being a shepherd. The sheep became his friends and his companions, and it became second nature to him to think of them before he thought of himself. Such a shepherd was said to be a good shepherd. But the false shepherd came into the job, not as a calling, but as a means of making money. He was in it simply and solely for the pay, and could not, the, the pay he could get out of it. He might even have been a man who had taken to the hills to get out of town. He had no sense of responsibility of his job. Any shepherd who was in it for his own sake, rather than for the sake of the sheep, was a bad shepherd. This contrast between the good and the bad shepherd was no doubt what Jesus had in mind when he said, I am the good shepherd. As the good shepherd, Jesus was saying to all who follow him that he was born into the world for a purpose. He was sent to be a shepherd of God's flock. He grew into the calling of being the kind of shepherd who would lay his life down for the sheep. His sheep would become his friends and do whatever he asked. His sheep would become his companions who would be with him forever. There would never be a time when the well-being of his sheep would be anything less than his major concern, even though they walked through the valley of the shadow. Not only is Jesus the good shepherd of all those who trust him enough to follow him, the part of this great saying that really appeals to me is the second part, I know my sheep. Contemplate for a moment what it means for the great shepherd to know his sheep. We must understand, of course, that when Jesus talks about the shepherd, he is using that analogy as a reference to himself. And when he talks about sheep, the analogy has to do with people which tells us that any reference by Jesus to my sheep is a reference to those of us who belong to him by virtue of our trust in him. 
What this tells me is that he knows me. He knows you. He knows everything about you and me, who we are, where we are, what we do, and how we live. He knows all about us individually. I am a unique individual created in the image of God, and with Jesus as my Savior, I'm an important person, known by him and loved by him. Just as surely as the good shepherd in that touching story of the 99 loved all his sheep, each one of them, to the extent that he was willing to risk his life to find and bring safely home the one that was lost, Jesus loves you and me, each and every one of us. He knows us so well that he has promised never to leave or forsake us. He watches over us and protects us from harm or danger. He supplies our every need, even in ways that we cannot imagine. None of us has anything to fear, even in times of uncertainty. Yes, Jesus is the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd of the sheep, and he knows his sheep. But the third part of this third saying is where the challenge lies for those of us who are represented by the sheep analogy. Jesus concludes this third great saying with the phrase, and they know me. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. He knows me and I know him. I shall follow him all the days of my life and I shall dwell with him in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We will continue with the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you have prayer requests you'd like to share, you can post them in comments on our Facebook page or you can email them to lincolncommunityumc at gmail.com. Private prayer requests can be given to Pastor Chris through phone call, text, or email at any time. Now let us pray for the church and our world. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for all people, and especially those in any kind of need, through famine, war, or natural disaster. Make your ways known upon earth, your saving power among all peoples. Help us to lighten their burden and to seek justice and peace for all. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in holiness of life. Strengthen your church in the service of Christ, that we may be witnesses to your compassion. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, 
body, spirit, or relationship. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bless those who care for them. We commit to your mercy all who have died. Grant to us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We commend ourselves with all people to your unfailing love. Accept these prayers, we pray, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now together let us pray as we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Church is so grateful for your continued generosity throughout this time that have helped maintain the ministries we share. You can donate electronically by visiting lincolncommunityumc.org slash donate or mail a check to 9074 Whitaker Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan 48197. Let us with gladness present the offerings to the Lord. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered all things earthly and heavenly into one, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.